and a very warm welcome to yet another scintillating edition of the program CAC Weekly, a weekly program that keeps you abreast on the activities and achievements of the Corporate Affairs Commission. My name is Maria Aduzakari. Coming up today, CAC Partners Modern to catalyze SME growth, 10,000 jobs in focus, NADF and Call Mall Partnership. CAC set to penalize companies for annual return default. We'll be right back. My name is Hussein Ishak Magazi, Silo Advocate of Nigeria and the fifth Registrar General of the Corporate Affairs Commission. Let me use this opportunity to thank Mr. President Senator Paula Ahmed Tenubu GCFA and the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Doris Anache, for finding me worthy for the appointment into this important position. Let me also thank the management and the staff of the Corporate Affairs Commission for the cooperation given to me to come up with my four-point agenda. Welcome back. Let's begin. The Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, is making arrangements to partner with the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, SMEDAN, to create 10,000 jobs amongst others. This was revealed during a meeting between the Registrar General of the CAC, Hussein Ishak Magajisan, and the Director General, Smeden, Mr. Charles Odi. The Smeden boss revealed that a 5 billion naira loan at single digit interest has been secured from a famous Nigerian bank to drive the project. He therefore requested support and collaboration with the CAC to actualize the project, which is scheduled to launch in January 2024. The CAC Registrar General, while responding, assured the Commission's readiness to fully partner with Smedin. He described the initiative as laudable in tandem with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's renewed hope agenda. CAC Weekly reports that the Smedin DG was accompanied on the visit by Dr. Aisha Trukabiru of KPMG, who is expected to facilitate the actualization of the project which will also focus on increasing manufacturing output and export income, thereby catalyzing SME growth. Moving on to another partnership arrangement, the Registrar General and CEO of the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC Husseini Ishak Magajisan, has continued to receive his counterparts from sister agencies on collaborative missions. The Registrar General received Mohammed Abu Ibrahim, Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of the National Agricultural Development Fund, NADF. Mohammed Abu Ibrahim was recently appointed by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the new leader at the fund, with a mandate to remove all barriers to efficient access to provisional funding in the agricultural sector for the attainment of complete self-sufficiency in local food production and eventual surplus export. During the visit, the duo discussed issues of cooperation between the two agencies to ensure the success of President Chinobu's renewed hope agenda. Let's now shift gears and talk compliance. Do you know that the Karma 2020 grants the CAC the power to sue Moto strike of the name of a company from the register where it observes or has reasonable cause to believe that the company is not carrying on business, has not been in operation for a period of 10 years, or has not complied with the provisions of the Companies and Allied Matters Act for a consecutive period of 10 years. Section 692, subsection 3, 4, and 5 of the CAMA, however, mentions certain mandatory procedures for the CAC to follow, which may include publication in at least three national newspapers a, a notice of its intention to strike off the company from the register, among others. The law, however, provides that any company member or creditor not satisfied with the striking off from the register by the commission, Sumoto, may apply to the court at any time before the expiration of the 10 years from the date of publication to get relisted. For more on this and many others, Let's join Mr. Justin Media Biral, Director of Compliance, in our interview segment. Uh, Mr. Nidia Justin Biral, good to have you on the program again. Thank you for having me. 
and welcome back from the break. Thank you very much. All right. Yes. Um, today, um, still continuation of the um, the listing and striking of. Um, but today we are going to be looking at properly um, the issue of striking of or the listing. But let's get this straight. A striking of the same thing as the listing of companies, as far as the corporate commission is concerned. Yes, they are used interchangeably. Okay, so there's no difference. There is no difference. So it's, it means the same thing, one and the same. Yeah, they are one and the same thing. Okay, so what is the striking of or the listing all about of companies? Well, simply what it means is a process of uh, removing the name of a company from the register of mm. uh, companies. Okay. Yes, and that comes with consequences. Okay. Yes. No, I, I know we'll get to that in, yes, in, in yes. the midst of the uh, as the program goes on. Um, but let's look at um, types of the listing or striking of. So you even have types. I thought yes. it's just one of. No, there are broadly two types. Okay. Uh, what is considered as uh, voluntary striking of mm. and compulsory uh, striking of. Okay. It is the compulsory striking of that is made up of two components. So what it means is that there are two broad classes okay. and under the compulsory we have two types. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, under voluntary you have two types. Under compulsory we have two types. So what are the types under compulsory? The types are what we call one, uh, the one that is automatic. Okay. And uh, the requirement for that is that uh, once you have not filed annual return for a period of 10 years, mm. you are automatically uh, qualified to be delisted or removed from mm. the register of companies. Okay. The other one is the one that uh, uh, arises in situations where the commission has reasonable cause to believe that your company is not carrying on business. Mm. You write a letter of inquiry to that company to ask for confirmation as to whether it is carrying on a business or mm. not. And once uh, you receive a positive response that is not carrying on business, or there is no response f within a specified period of time, then you could go ahead and uh, delist that company also. Okay, mm. and I, I, I want to jump in here. Mm. Why will the commission wait for 10 years to begin to talk about automatic delisting or voluntary delisting? Why wait for 10 years? Well, for voluntary uh, uh, delisting or striking off, mm. uh, you don't have to wait for a period of 10 years. Okay. Because that one is initiated by the company. Okay. The only requirement is that uh, once uh, the company has not commenced business, then uh, you, you can initiate the process of mm. voluntarily removing the company from the, uh, from the register of companies. But why the 10 years tr um, threshold? The why threshold is for compulsory uh, delisting of companies. Mm, but why 10 years? Isn't the, it too the, long? The, uh, the 10 years is uh, probably uh, done deliberately to give a leeway uh, for what is called uh, ups and downs in the economy. Okay. okay. Uh, but if you give that long period of time and the person is not able to commence any business, mm then there is likelihood that uh, the person may not commence business and therefore should be removed from the register. But for those who will say 10 years is very far, whatever um, criteria you are going to use, mm. it's too long a period. Uh, if, you feel it is, if you feel it is too mm. long, mm. then uh, the, 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 the promoters of the company can go come by way of voluntary uh, striking off which means they don't have to wait for that. No, I'm not even talking about the part of the companies. I'm talking about on the part of the commission. On the part of the Yes, commission. like the automatic striking of, where you have to wait for people 10 years because you are considering the economic situation mm. and you are giving people the grace to get back to their, on their feet mm. and try to run business for 10 years before you begin to say, if you don't pay up, you'll be struck off or you'll be delisted. Yes, if you look at the two types that we analyzed yeah. uh, in, mm -hmm. the, in the beginning, we did say that uh, the commission need not necessarily wait for that period of 10 years. Mm. For that period of 10 years, what it means is that you are automatically qualified okay. to be delisted. Okay. But the other type, which we said you uh, initiate by way of making an inquiry, 
uh, to the company. You don't have to wait for a period of 10 years. Once you uh, have reasonable cause to believe mm. that the company is not carrying on business, you can issue what a letter of inquiry for confirmation as to whether that company is carrying on business or not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at the volume of companies that are to be delisted or struck off. I'm seeing the first badge of 10,000, second badge of 40,000, and a third badge of 100,000. Yeah. But the question is, how many registered companies do we have in Nigeria? People will say if you have this kind of comp Okay, just answer the question first. How many companies do we have? For now, uh, uh, the figure is slightly above 2 million. 2 million companies? Yes. Duly registered? Yes. So that means there will be no lack of job? Uh, ordinarily, that is the pre <laughs> presumption. Because if you look at the volume, <laughs> yes. so we don't have any business with unemployment. Well, yes, if, uh, if all of the companies are into operation. Okay. And uh, we make an assumption, for instance, that uh, a company is, it should employ about two people. Mm -hmm. then you the can, least it uh, could do, yeah. uh, The least it will employ about two people. Then mm. you can see that uh, ordinarily that would have brought the figure of unemployment in the country. Mm. But like uh, we have said in the course of this discussion, you discover that quite a number of the companies are also uh, dormant. Mm. Uh -huh. So as we speak today, about 100,000 is dormant? No, that's the one uh, that uh, we, we have publicized to be delisted. Mm, okay. There okay. could be more than that. Okay. Yeah. So what happened to the 10 and the 40? Well, the, the 10,000 and the 40. The 10,000 was the one uh, that, were, uh, that was delisted in the first batch. Okay. Then the one that is about 40,000 uh, was the one uh, contained in the list that was delisted in the second batch. Okay. The one for which publication has already been made is uh, for about 100,000. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So 100,000 will automatically go? No, quite a few of them well, uh, have responded to the publication. Okay, okay. They so what is the response so far? The response... Since the publication has been made? Uh, the response has been uh, roughly as at the time it was reviewed about uh, five to six thousand responded have, have filed annual return that's but, too uh, small uh, uh, you can see yeah uh, you are right that uh, that figure is too small mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but that is what we have at the moment okay so if if nothing happens between now and the end of december 95 will go 95 will automatically be delisted will, will be delisted yes but what is the challenges of them not, okay, the economic situation and maybe some of them are dormant? Yes. Okay. So now let's go to the consequences of delisting this 95 or 94,000. Well, the consequences for delisting a company is that uh, the company would be technically considered to be dead. Okay. Uh, so what it means is that if the company has assets, that those assets uh, in line with legal requirement will mm. be forfeited to the federal government mm. as what is considered as uh, bona vacantia. Mm. That's uh, property without owner. Property so. without owner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so Even when there's an owner. <laughs> well, the owner is dead. Okay. <laughs> so that, because it's not in business. That, uh, uh, it's not in business. Yeah. That's why the ownership should be transferred to the federal government. Okay. That is one. Then two. You can also not sue or be uh, or uh, sue or, or either the company cannot sue or uh, another person may not be able to sue in the name of the company. Okay. Yes. These are the consequences. The consequences. Okay. But the law allows uh, the commission to also uh, follow uh, liabilities of the officers that uh, are being responsible. So you can see two scenarios now. Okay. For the assets. Uh, yeah, it, it, it will be forfeited to the federal government mm. but for liabilities of persons that include directors, shareholders and uh, employees of the company, mm -hmm. their liability will continue even after the, the company has been delisted. So what if they get a job somewhere else or they form another company? Uh, that, what happens uh, that's, to them? That's different. The liability will still be there. Or they leave the country, they jack and they leave the country? Well, uh, uh, there is a way around it. Okay. Even if you leave, uh, if you have assets. You what if I don't have any assets? 
I sold all my assets and I'm leaving. Well, well that could be considered as a bad debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what we have in this country? A lot of bad debt. Uh, well, yes. Uh, maybe, maybe because uh, quite a number of those that uh, registered the companies mm. also uh, wouldn't have registered the company in the first place. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm also seeing um, issue of remedial measures. Mm. So it means it's not it's a carrot and stick approach, isn't it? That's what the commission is deploying. Yes, it allows a uh, person two scenarios ordinarily arises. Mm. Uh, the company on its own can apply for what is called relisting. And uh, for it to properly do that, it would require it will be required to obtain an order from the federal high court okay. authorizing it to be relisted mm. back to the register of company mm. that order is forwarded to us with, along with an official form and a payment of a small prescribed fee uh, the application is reviewed and if it is approved the company comes back to okay. to life how much is the fee uh, the fee is um, $25,000. To get relisted? Yes. Okay. Okay. So once I pay my 25000 I can come back? Uh, after, but after, I mean, after obtaining an order for okay. relisting from the Federal High Court. What about my liabilities? Liabilities, we said, uh, for the company, you may not be able to enforce it mm. while, it's, uh, while it remains striking of the register. Mm -hmm. But liabilities of either the directors, the members, mm. can always be enforced irrespective of the fact that the company has been delisted. Okay. Yes. Now, I'm trying to get it now. Please help me understand it. So, my company is delisted here, mm. and I can come back for relisting. Yes. Then I'm owing the commission annual returns of maybe mm. 10 years. Yes. So, what happens to that 10 years? If mm -hmm. you are coming back, if you obtain an order for relisting, mm. You will be required as part of the application to also update the annual return. Okay. Which you are the primary reason for which the company... Okay, so I must pay my debt. Of course, you will pay the annual return. And then I can get relisted back. Yes. On track. Yeah. Uh, well, what is the duration between for going to court to obtain the order and the commission putting me back on track? Relisting me again. What's the duration? No, oh, yeah. there's no duration. Once I can get... Once you get the court order, usually, mm. for because it's an online process, okay. it's not supposed to take more than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. no, okay. Okay, yeah. that's if I get the court uh, order. If you get the court order. So the commission is going to be contending with a lot of court orders? Uh, for those that want to release. Okay. Uh, for those that want to release. Are you envisaging um, a large number of people coming back for releasing? Is the commission emphasizing in that? No, from experience, uh, quite a few of them do come back. Okay. Yeah, but the figure is actually minimal. Okay. Mm. okay. So, but uh, uh, like as it con is contained in our publication, mm. going forward, uh, the commission will not just allow companies to be delisted. It will go after the officers of the company mm. to recover their liabilities. Mm. So irrespective of whether the companies have been delisted or not. How long will that take? Uh, it will be difficult because <laughs> uh, to put a time frame mm. uh, to that because that will require engagement okay. uh, with the officers concerned. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at the scenario that um, at the end of the day, 10,000 people are able to make their annual return, and then um, 90,000 are going to be delisted. Is that not a bad market for a commission that is seriously looking for funds? Well, uh, bad market... Mm. Uh, <laughs> for the is, owners of the company? Is that so, what you want to say? No, I don't know from which perspective you want to... No, look, I'm looking at look, it that 90,000 will be struck over the listed, and there's no money for the commission. Well, what it is, is that uh, actually keeping them mm -hmm. on the register... And maintaining them. And maintaining them. That's where the bad market is. Uh, is, is actually uh, not cost-effective because uh, uh, there is what is called carrying cost mm -hmm. of both keeping them on the register, whether it is fiscal register ah. or the electronic register, mm. uh -huh, because there, there is 
you have to pay for space on the server, you have to buy server to keep them then uh, you have to maintain those servers. So the cost of maintenance the, is the, huge. It's, it's huge. So they should so, give so, room so for other is, people who are serious. Uh -huh, that, is, that is the idea. Okay. Yes. All right. And you said going forward, aside from making sure that, um, you know, directors or, you know, owners of companies are made to pay their liabilities, what other measures is the commission taking going forward? Uh, we will engage uh, the, 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 the sectors. Okay. We try to uh, enlighten the people okay. first on their obligations mm -hmm. to ensure that they update those annual return. Because if you do as and when due, the, the amount is actually very minimal. It's mm. just 5,000 for, the uh, for, for, for small companies and then 10,000 for public limited liability companies. So if you do it on a yearly basis, it's, it's, it's very, very cheap. Insignificant. It's insignificant. It's when you allow it to accumulate mm. over a period of time mm. that uh, at certain point now in the future you will see that the amount might be uh, uh, high. Is the commission contemplating or reviewing the annual return? Reviewing in terms of? Upward. Well, uh, <laughs> we, 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 we will rule that one out mm -hmm. because almost everything is a, is high has, now. Has, has gone out. And uh, you also notice that uh, uh, it's not easy to maintain uh, ele an electronic system, mm -hmm. a system that works because you require uh, to maintain steady light or power supply for almost 21, 24 hour mm -hmm. basis. So that the servers don't run down. So uh, the, the 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 reality actually is that uh, in the near future mm. it might be difficult for the commission to sustain uh, optimal operation if the fees if the fees are not uh, reviewed. reviewed. They're reviewed, They're not yes. reviewed upward. Yes. All right, uh, Mr. And dear Justin Bureau, Director Compliance. Many thanks for your time as usual, sir. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Hello there. It's a brand new quarter and your favorite program, CAC Weekly, is about to unveil new innovations fresh from the Nigerian company registry. Have you heard of the extensible business reporting language standard for filing of electronic financial statements? Do you know that there's so much you can do on your own on the company's registration portal, CRP, from the comfort of your home or office? The CRP offers, amongst others, end-to-end -end electronic registration solution for accredited customers and the general public to initiate and complete pre-registration and post-registration applications electronically, online filing of annual return, online registration of limited liability partnership and limited partnership. See you there. Great insight from Justin there. Have you updated your records with the CAC? Well done if you have. And if you are yet to do that, Please hurry now to www.cac.gov.ng to update your records to avoid being struck off. The CAC remains committed to working hard to provide prompt and efficient service to customers in line with global best practices. And that does it for this week's edition of the program, CAC Weekly. We hope you enjoyed watching. For comments and inquiries, please take advantage of our social media handles and helpline. On Instagram and Facebook, we're at Corporate Affairs Commission. At X, formerly Twitter, we're at CAC Nigeria 1. Our email address is cservice at cac.gov.ng. And our website is on www.cac.gov.ng. Our consenter is 70 do join us next week for another interesting edition of the program, Same Time, Same Station. From me, Maria Adozakari, and the whole team here, it's bye for now.